Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to have a look at the changes to the utility and the EQ8 devices in Ableton Live 10. So I've just looped up a section of the arrangement where we have the breakdown on the chorus and all I'm going to do is I'm going to place the devices onto our master bus. So the first thing we can notice when we look at the EQ8 is that it looks like we've already got a high pass filter applied. And we actually don't, if we click on this, we'll see that it's at 35 hertz still. But now we have all of this extra freedom of movement, so it goes all the way down to 10 hertz. And that also means that we get to be able to see this extra part of spectrum analysis as well. So we can pop that open and we can get a better idea of what's going on. But what's an even better way of doing this, if I just loop this up, and I'm going to solo just the bass frequencies and we'll come on to the utility device in a second. But this will now give us an idea of what's actually going on down in this area. So, very subtle, but we can hear there is a change there. And if I boost it, and I'm going to sweep from 10 hertz to 35, and we'll see if we can hear any changes. So we can hear some distortion creeping in there at 25 hertz. And then we get to 35. So you can see there is a need to potentially be able to go down this far, especially if you're making things like dub reggae or some drum and bass, where you're going to be hitting around those 30 hertz and below, and there may be harmonics lower down that you want to clean up and get rid of, and then you can choose between your standard filter slopes to do that. So, that's the changes to the EQ8. I'll just leave that at 35 hertz, and we'll pull this all the way back across again, and let this loop round. So next we have the utility device and a lot of people were asking that the gain goes all the way down to minus infinite dBs and your suggestion has now been answered so just to show you we can do that it goes down to minus infinite and we can also go all the way up to plus 35 decibels but I'm not going to do it in this case because it's going to be way too loud and I don't want to blow my speakers. The phase invert now works on the input as opposed to the output. And then we have our standard options here to listen to different parts of the mix or swap them over. We then have our width control, which now appears to go up to 400% as opposed to 200. And we have this really handy bass section as well. So, what we can do is we can press mono to mono the whole mix rather than having to do this. But if we want to still do it using the width, we can do. So, that's quite handy because I like to automate this function. I find knobs are a little bit easier to automate than using a button. We then have the bass mono. And if we hit this, then what it's going to do is it's going to mono the bass below the frequency that we set in this slider here. So I typically go for around 150, 200 hertz. But now they've allowed us to now take the guesswork out of the equation with this handy little button. You can hear that's what we've got going on below 50 hertz. And as we push this slider up to around 200 hertz, we can start to hear our snare creeping in. So for those of you that don't know, the reason that we mono the bass up to around 200 hertz is because at the center of the mix is where it's coming out of both speakers equally. So that's where we're gonna get the most amount of power and energy. And obviously that's what we want from things like our kick and our bass. And as well as that, generally speaking, stereo imaging doesn't go very well on basses because our ears can't pick it up anyway below a certain frequency. And it's definitely gonna cause some phase issues. As well as the gain knob, we now have this proper balance control as well, which replaces the panorama slider that we had before so we can push the mix to the side and readjust it if we need to and then we also have the mute and the dc offset buttons as well okay so while we're here i'm going to do a little bit of automation and show you a few ways that we can use these two devices across the mix so what we can do is we can try and accentuate the tension and resolution of our breakdown into our chorus and we can do that by automating the eq8 
filter and resonance here and also by widening our mix and reducing the gain and what that's going to do is it's going to bring things down a notch just before the drop and the reason it's going to do that is because as I said earlier about focus and stereo image as we push stuff out to the side what we're doing is we're taking a lot of weight and power and punch out of the music and as well as that we're going to have a EQ8 which is going to filter out the lows so as we filter out the lows we're getting all of these extra claps and all of this white noise which is obviously going to be pushing up the gain quite a lot so we need to counteract that by reducing the gain only by about maybe three decibels and then we return that gain to zero on the drop or what we could even do is just bump that up by 0.5 decibels just to give it a bit more impact and then likewise with the stereo imaging we just tighten that back up from a wide mix to a centralized mix again. Another thing I want to show you if we go to our width control and right click then you can see on the context menu we get this mid side mode which is essentially what we're trying to achieve as well. So we have 100S which is just the sides mix, we have 100M which is mono and then we have the central position which is the normal mix. So I'll do this using the standard width method first. So we'll just jump into the automation and we want to be aiming for somewhere between 100 and 150%. If we go too high then it's going to be too much side information and it just sounds a bit strange. Remember we want this to be a real subtle effect combined with the EQ8. Once we've automated the width, we can now do the gain. So we just right click, show automation, and we just want to pull that down by maybe two or three decibels maximum. So like I said, this isn't a very obvious effect, it's just something that I know a lot of producers are doing to get the audience to subconsciously tone it down a notch on the build up and that means it's going to hit harder and there's going to be much more of an impact on that drop. So what I'll do now is I'll just demonstrate the same thing again but with mid side mode. I'll just fast forward this bit while I set the same automation again. What I'll also do while this is playing is I'll add the EQ8 automation as well and then I'll cut that out just before the chorus. And this time I'll be quiet so you can listen critically and see if you can notice the difference. So guys, that is everything in this video covering the changes to the utility and EQ8 devices in Ableton Live 10. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video where I'm going to be covering multi-midi clip editing.